Hi, I'm Glenn, Dave's behind the camera with the NC Beer Guys, and welcome to another episode of the NC Beer Buzz. We found our way back to the wonderful Bombshell Beer Company here in Holly Springs today. We want to do a couple of things by coming back to Bombshell today. We've got a brand new head brewery we wanted you to meet, Devin Singley. Howdy. And Devin has somewhat of an interesting take on how he does brewery tours. And we often show you brewery tours, and we know our fans go to breweries and tour all the time. But Devin thinks he's got something new and different to talk about on brewery tours. So we're going to let him uh, talk about how he does brewery tours. And then we're also going to show him in action doing a brewery tour here in a little bit and see what kind of crowd he can gather. And we'll judge just how good he is at doing brewery tours. Welcome to Bombshell. Welcome to the NC Beer Guys. Thanks, Glenn. I appreciate it a lot. How's it going? I'm a beer guy. I'm great. Uh, how's it been at Bombshell? You've been here how long? Uh, about four months at this point, but I've been brewing beer professionally for about seven years. Let's talk about your background. How'd you come to be here? Sure. Uh, I just uh, recently left uh, from Mystery Brewing in Hillsboro. Hey, Eric, I know you're watching. <laughs> and uh, before that, I worked at Aviator, and then before that, I worked at Red Oak. Um, and I've given brewery tours at, at all four of those breweries. Um, when I worked at Mystery, I gave tours every Saturday, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I'm also a big fan of brewery tours. My, my wife is from Germany. We spent about a week in, in Munich last summer. And so you've I, seen I the old world style. I really enjoy taking brewery tours. And one thing is, even though I don't speak German very well, um, we like to take tours when we're in Europe in German. I like to watch the, the sort of communication, mm -hmm. that's, you know, the nonverbal way that people right. go through the story. There's basically two types of brewery tours. If you have a very large brewery, like in Munich, Paul Honor, mm -hmm. it's a walk through the facility. Right. Uh, and it if, shows you all the different components. If you take a brewery tour like Red Oak, it's much the same way. You start out in one room, you move to another room, you move to another room. Um, and those tours are really good because they're designed, in my mind, like a theme park. You know, if you look, every, every theme park is in a circle. Mm -hmm. So it takes you through a loop the process, of the process. Right. It's really nice. It's very well done. Um, a smaller brew house, um, something in this size where you can sort of stand in one spot and get a good view of most everything. Um, it's, it's more of a how we make beer process. Right. So you, you show where your equipment is and you show where it moves through the process because you don't have all the chambers to walk someone through. It's more a conversation about beer. And don't, do, do, I won't say don't you, do you find that your uh, people who come for a tour generally know about craft beer already? It's a mix, right? It's, it's a broad mix. Right. Um, and that makes it challenging to get to everybody with the same tour. It is. Um, when I worked at Mystery especially, um, I, I felt like I had a really good process where I would try to say everything twice. So when I would talk about the invention of the saccharometer, I would say that, and I know there's there's always a home brewer on the shore. I, right. At one point, I used to be like, who's the home brewer? Uh -huh. Raise your hand. <laughs> Get out of the way already. Uh, Get away first. So I would say, uh, until the invention of the saccharometer, which is a way of measuring sugar. Mm -hmm. And and so that way you, you break things down. Someone who's advanced hears what they want to hear. That's right. But someone who's on their very first brewery tour also understands something when they come away. Mm -hmm. One thing I used to do is, is I would take uh, admit one tickets and I would hold that up as a you know show of a starch chain. And I was like, sugars are just a shorter chemical chain of starches. And I would start tearing apart mm -hmm. the admit one things to show the, the maltose. And say, like, this is a two chain sugar. And sometimes you get sprink. <laughs> and I would rip off and just have like one ticket, and I would say, and this is a dextrin sugar. Mm -hmm. And um, you know the the ways that you can communicate visually in those nonverbal communications, you're going to reach the most people. And why do you think people come to brewery tours? It's a big thing. Uh, if you look at how, especially millennials buy beer, they look for places they have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Washington, D.C. last weekend, and I was sitting in my office a minute ago reading uh, in the Virginia beer-centric uh, circular, and it was all about beer tourism and, and how people like to go, they like to visit, they want to try new things, but they want to have a connection back to the beer. They also want to know what's going on on the backside, I think. Mm -hmm. They come, they may sit in the tap area and taste and try. They may know the brand, know the product line. But until they see the backside, they don't feel like they really are a part of what's going on. They want on. the brewery experience. Mm -hmm. It's one thing we talk about a lot here. How does someone that visits our tap room, how do they feel they visited a brewery? How is it different from just going to a bar? Mm -hmm. What makes it the experience right. of coming to Bombshell? 
And some of the breweries now are even setting their facilities up so that your tap area and tasting area are kind of enveloped in the middle of the brewery or behind the glass wall or mm -hmm. you get the zoo effect. Of course, you got her back the here. Zoo. You get yeah. back here working and they're like with her nose pressed to the glass. What's he doing there? What's he figuring out? I, I often so, want to so put up a sign that says don't tap on the glass. <laughs> yeah, I am not dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what, how do you know you've done a good brew tour? Uh, it, it, we call it getting the clap. <laughs> and uh, at the end of a brewery tour, it, you know it was an okay tour if people go, all right, well, I guess I'm going to go done. back to the I'm done. I can go drink some more beer. But if you give the tour and people are... Right. And how about questions? Questions got to give you an indication, too, if they're engaged. Sure. And, and my favorite way to engage people, I, I introduce the crowd as always, my friends. And, and I'll tell people uh, there's no sense in being shy. We're all drinking buddies at this point. And how, what side of the crew are you usually dealing with? That has really varied from right. Of course, you don't know on any given night the, who wants to lose The largest show up. tour I ever gave was to just over 200 people. Mm -hmm. uh, That's hard. The smallest tour I've ever given was to two people, one of whom didn't speak English. Okay. So I spoke in short sentences for that person yeah. to translate uh -huh. to their mother. And, and you and never know what challenges to present walking in the door because you may know you've got some people who have signed up for the tour. You don't know what experience level they bring, what knowledge base they bring, or whether they even speak English for that matter. That, that's a true story. <laughs> I, uh, I think I first knew I, was, I really enjoyed, and, and it came through a lot on brewery tours when, uh, when I worked at Mystery and I was visiting Prior Brewing in Greensboro, and someone recognized me in Greensboro okay. and said, you give tours of Mystery, right? And I said, I do. Yeah. And I said, oh, I took your tour, and I told all my friends to go take the tour, and thanks to you, I know the difference between a porter and a stout. That's great. You and felt good. Yeah. I was like, that's awesome. That's right. Pumped you up. Buy me a beer now. That's great. They didn't buy me a beer. We're going to see how good you are in just a minute. All right. Thanks, Glenn. Before we do that, we're going to talk a little bit about Bombshell, the sure. beer lineup. What's on now? What's wonderful? Mm -hmm. What's coming out? Well, uh, tomorrow, but by the time you're watching this, it. It'll be a week, we'll be a, a week, a week yeah. next week. It won't be long. Um, we'll have Dirty Secret Coconut Stout. Which is wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, we, don't have, we haven't had yours, though. We've had the product. Mine's the best. Okay. You'll, you'll get some. Wonderful. Uh, one thing that we did differently this year um, is we toasted the coconut. It was hand-toasted. Uh, Ellen and Michelle took copious amounts home to, to hand-toast. <laughs> right. And, and I understand their houses smelled amazing. You never know what owning the brewery can get you, do you? Yeah. I was like, that, that falls in, the, in that like, back of the book, the things people never tell <laughs> that's you. That's right, you never know you want to do it. Yeah, that's right. You don't realize you're really running a trucking company, and sometimes <laughs> you have to toast coconuts. That's right. Um, so we, we did that. We also wanted more coconut flavor to stay in the beer and focus more on Whirlpool editions of coconut mm -hmm. as opposed to a heavier mash coconut. Right, right. Um, those are two words I've never really had to say so, before, mashed coconut. <laughs> mashed coconut. So that flavor profile is, must be wonderful. Oh, it's, you can really taste the coconut. I really, I'm a big fan of, of toasted grains, and I feel like the flavor has come through very nicely. What else, yeah. maybe? What else? New uh, and wonderful. New and wonderful. Uh, I got a medal at the State Fair for Very Autumn good. Fest. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so now, much. What is, what is Autumn Fest? Autumn Fest was our fall seasonal. Um, and it is, uh, most simply put, an amber ale, but it is, uh, it's, it's really in the vein of an alt beer, mm -hmm. and it won in the hybrid amber for being an alt beer. Okay. Um, and it is, it's pretty much sort of an Oktoberfest, but with ale yeast. Right. Uh, my wife used to live in Munich, uh, so I like to use, ingredients have a tie-in somewhere. Mm -hmm. So this beer uh, is, is a major base of, of Munich and some dark Munich. Um, I have something cool out now called Tail Chaser Wheat. It is an American-style wheat beer. It is made specifically designed well with Thai food and mm -hmm. seafood. And nice. it is wonderful. I made it with a specific restaurant in mind. Um, it's doing very well there. Uh, it's a wheat beer. It's relatively clear. Um, because, but I didn't want it like a yeast flavor. So um, I, I think it works very well for its intended purpose of, of pairing well with food. It also uses grains from Epiphany Malt in Durham. So yep, again, a brand new malt, Brand new malt house. And then I have a coffee porter out now, and that has 10 pounds of coffee in it from Sludge Coffee. And they're in, they're in Holly Springs. They just opened across the street, actually. Okay. And they did a roast just for me. So keeping it local pounds. if you can. 
Yeah, I like I said, I, I love to have a specific thing. I love for there to be a tie-in. I love for there to be, you know, this beer is different from every other coffee beer. It's because local and it's unique in that mm -hmm. regard. Again, congratulations Thanks. on the medal and on Thank your you. Thank you so uh, much. coming to Bombshell. Thank you. You're going to be great for these guys. I appreciate it. And now we're going to see Devin in action. My friends, I would like to welcome all of you to the largest brewery in all of Quantum Street, Holly Springs. <laughs> but not only are you standing in the largest brewery in all of Quantum uh, Street, you're also standing in North Carolina's first 100% female-owned brewery. Yes. Three women that own this brewery is not owned by a bank, it is owned by actual people. Um, beer is, is sort of an interesting thing. Uh, it, it's actually really important to a lot of scientific advancement, things you really wouldn't think uh, that come from beer, things like the pH scale. The pH scale was devised at a brewery. Uh, if, if you're ever playing trivia at a bar and, and pH is a question, uh, it stands for percent hydrogen. Uh, P is little, H is big, because H is a chemical symbol for hydrogen. hydrogen. And, and that was discovered at the Carlsberg Brewery in Denmark. You've probably heard of the most famous scientist from uh, Carlsberg's R&D department. It was a guy by the name of Louis Pasteur. Uh, now, uh, he wasn't famous till his uh, process of pasteurization was applied to milk, but it was originally uh, done for, for beer. Pasteurization was developed for beer. Uh, we're pretty informal people in, in the beer business, so you know, I'll just call him Lou. Uh, and, and so Lou probably didn't call it pasteurization. He probably simply called it that thing that I do, or meization. Uh, but it was first done for, for beer. And, and the reason why it's done for beer, this goes back to the, the century. And, and beer would, would be on a ship. It took six months to get from London around the Cape of Good Hope to get to India. And, and the beer wasn't surviving passage. And, and people, you know, from London, they had a you know, certain metabolism. They, they weren't used to the water when they would show up somewhere like India. And you couldn't drink the local water. So they had to have the beer. But the beer had to be palatable. The beer wasn't good. People wouldn't drink it when they got there. So pasteurization was developed to make sure the beer wouldn't spoil on this six-month journey of halfway around the world. Um, and then, of course, they figured out, you know, you also had a lot more hops. And that's why we have Indian Pale Ale. Later on, you're going to tell your friends who took a brewery tour. They'll say, oh, man, that's awesome. I bet you learned a whole lot. And you'll say, no. Because you're the kind of person who takes a brewery tour on a Saturday. You already know everything about beer. So I'm going to give you a word to tell your friends so they'll be satisfied that you learned something today. And that word is cylindroconical. Kind of a cylinder, kind of a cone, a cylinder conical. And it describes the shape of this fermentation vessel. Uh, I like talking about tanks because I use my favorite smarty pants word, and that is hydrostatic pressure. So, so and that's a fancy way of saying water has weight. Yeah. Um, so what happens is we, we, we have separated the tube, and now it goes into this tank and we add yeast and, and over time, the yeast falls asleep and it settles out. And hydrostatic pressure pushes it to the bottom of this cone. And we can, we can drop that true, and we can harvest the yeast to reuse. And then we pull from a racking arm to a higher level of beer. So we get a cleaner, clear, brighter beer. Throughout this entire process, what we're really trying to do is just a clear and clearer beer. So, it moves on from this cylindroconical, there will be a test later, and, and then from here it moves on to a bright beer tank for kegging, uh, and now also canning. Until next time, this is David Glenn, NC Beer Guys, remind you to drink local and keep your beer dollars in North Carolina.